Ananda, Chriso. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, virtual event held by College Cambria. And my name is Sean Regan and I'm one of our Sports and P lecturers here at College Cambria. And with me today is Emily Martin, who's one of our um, current or, or finishing level three students who is um, about to go on to one of our foundation degrees in September. I've um, been working at the college for about five years now. I've lectured full time at Yale in Wrexham. Uh, I've worked across both sides and now I'm, uh, I'm permanently in D side. So hopefully I can give you uh, some information that will be beneficial to, to any of you guys who, uh, who are enthusiastic about sports and want to come onto one of our courses here at Cambria. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of what we're going to do. So I'm going to give you some information on the courses that we offer at Cambria. Um, Emily is going to discuss the student experience and, and we've got Emily here because one, she's a very good student, we've enjoyed having her, but two, um, I think it's important that you guys hear from a student their perspective and, and how they find it. Um, then we will discuss uh, your prospects, if you do one of our courses, what could come next, um, and then the opportunity to ask some questions. Just on that, however you guys are watching this right now, if you do have any questions, feel free to add them to the comments and send them through now, and we get to the question stage of some ready. Um, but before we get going, there's uh, a quick video we'd like to show you about Colic Cambria Life. We are Cambria. We were rated excellent by Eston inspectors. We inspire success. We provide learners with work experience, which enables them to have the very best employment opportunities. We are the highest performing college in Wales. We lead the way with our world class facilities. We partner with top universities to bring degrees to your doorstep. We have raised over £500,000 for charity since 2013. We impact positively on the wider communities we serve. We change thousands of lives every year. We can change yours. Your success starts here. And we're back. Um, that was a lovely video, to be fair. I really like that. Um, I think one thing just from watching that video is um, a great job from the marketing team. And, and our job is to promote the college and discuss, um, you know, what a good place it is to be. But from a, from a member of staff's point of view, from a, from a tutor's point of view, I, I truly believe that. And I think it's, um, it's a privilege to work there. So somewhere I'm really, really proud to, to, to work. Um, so from, from a sports point of view, I'm sure you guys... Would like to know about the courses we have, have on offer and it's important to acknowledge that no matter what GCSEs you get no matter kind of what path you've been down in, in in the past that we offer a course for you so our courses work at different levels right away from level one level two level three um also the foundation degrees at level four and five so kind of starting point for for a lot of our students might be at level one and at level one we offer a diploma in sports and public services for this course, you just need to have completed four GCSEs um, or even progress from uh, foundation learning at College Cambria. And that gives you an opportunity just to, to get used to college, to, to learn some of the basic things that you need to learn to, to progress on to further courses. From there, we have our level two extended certificate in sport. Um, and for this qualification, you could progress from level one or you could come straight onto level two with four GCSEs. But for this, you, you would need to have uh, maths and English at uh, GCSE grade D or above. Um, level three, which is, is the course that Emily studied with us over the past two years, um, which is equivalent to three A levels. Um, and that is, uh, is a course that you need five GCSE, C or above to get onto. But again, that needs to, uh, to include English and maths. It's worth saying that alongside that, whether you start at level one or level three, if you do, do not have your, your C, in English and maths, that we'd still support you with those grades. It's important that we raise the standards and help you guys get to where you need to be. And I know Emily, uh, for example, has been on our courses and studied um, her English alongside that as well to help get her grades where they need to be. Um, but there are generic sport courses. We also offer one which is more in the fitness and health room. So we have a level two instructing exercise and fitness course, which is more for our, our potential PTs. And as a level two course, again, you need four GCSEs. Uh, with your, your D or above in English and maths or again progression from a relevant level one course. Um, 
and yeah, we've got a new course that, that we're offering this year that we're currently advertising and enrolling for, which is a level three in outdoor education. So again, same entry requirements as our level three sport course, but it might be for those guys who are a bit more interested in the outdoor uh, adventures activities route and um, can be more specific for people who, who want to go and work in that industry. As we discussed with Emily already, that, that we do offer level four, level five courses, uh, our foundation degrees. And we run a sports coaching foundation degree and a fitness and health one through Chester University. Uh, there is a video available on that one with uh, my colleague Tim Williams. But just to let you guys know, you can come onto those courses through successfully completing a level three or as a mature learner. Um, you don't need to have studied at College Canby, you come from a, a different institution. Um, and then if you wanted to get a full honours degree afterwards, you, you would complete um, at Chester or one of the other other sites or partners to get a full degree. So lots and lots of options in the sport industry um, and lots of courses to help you get there with Colic Cambria. Okay, I'm talking too much. Um, moving on, I think I think for me it was really important that we asked Emily to 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 be on this chat. Um, because because potential students and even parents are used to speaking to people like me. And again, as I say, I will promote the college. One, because it's my job, but two, because I, I do think it's a fantastic place to come and learn and, and, and obviously to work. But you guys need to hear from the students because, you know, they're the people that you're going to be and they're the people who can give you a better insight. Um, so I'm going to ask Emily a few questions and, and I'm sure she'll she'll chip in if she if she needs to at other points as well. Um, but hopefully that will be beneficial to, to anyone who's, who's interested in listening. And again, you know, stick your questions in as you go along, throw some comments in and um, we can help uh, in any way we can. So, Em, are you okay anyway? Are you good, Em? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Brilliant. Um, very strange. Obviously, we've not seen each other in person for a long time now. It's been a while, but um, Emily's been great at attending some of the online sessions we've done, so we still had some face-to-face -face contact uh, in, in some way, shape, or form. Em, well, how would you describe your experience at College Cambria? How do you find it to uh, as, a, as a campus to go to at Um, Well... If I'm being truly honest, I was actually quite nervous about joining the college because obviously I've been in high school at Coniskey for five years, so changing environment was a bit daunting at first. Um, when I joined the college, I didn't really know anyone, didn't know any of the tutors, didn't know what was it going to be all about. But honestly, now I I go on nights out with my class, I have laughs with the teachers. Honestly, I've made so many new friends with doing that. Um, uh, the teachers are so supportive. They also have a laugh with you because we do have a laugh, Sean, don't we? <laughs> we have a laugh. I think it's important that we have a laugh along the way. Yeah, and the fact that, because obviously when I started the college, all I wanted to do when I'm older is get a career in sport, but I never had a clue what career I actually wanted to go down or how to get there. But now studying at Colour Cambria, speaking to the teachers, speaking to other pupils that are there already, I've now got a, a pathway in place and I know what I want to be when I'm older. So it's great. I think, I think that's really important. And I think um, to anyone who's watching, you know, whether you're, you're committed and want to do sport or whether you're, you're not sure whether it's sport or something else, I think as Emily's saying there, I do think life becomes a little bit easier um, when you've got goals, when you know what you want to do. Emily discussed knowing she likes sport but not knowing where, but I think once you've, you've got some kind of roots and you can start working towards something, it probably helps, doesn't it? Yeah. What, what about the, the campus, Em? I know there'll be some people on here who may be interested in going to, to Yale and Wrexham, but what about, from your point of view, about the campus at Deeside? Um, what I like about our campus is the facilities that we use they're like up to date, so they're not like your old fashioned sports halls. Uh, the equipment is to a high standard, with it being checked with the leisure centre there. And um, the fact that we've got loads of canteens to pick from, so even we are a big college, but you can always manage to get your dinner on time because we've got three canteens to choose from. Yeah, I, I mean that's good. I mean we've we've had some new plans that are out at the moment for how things might change and improve as well. So hopefully, I know you're going to be back with us in September. Hopefully, that we'll both find it even better in September. The the, the plans I've seen look really good, to be fair. Um, and you've made friends, which is good. Um, I actually yeah. remember interviewing Emily for a place on the course, and um, 
and she was nice to me since she was keen. She had a kind of netball background as well, and she was already doing some work in the leisure industry, should we say? Um, so um, ideal, really. I think, I think a good step for Em. Um, what else was I going to ask you about? I was going to ask you about the course in general. So that's a bit about college life. What what about the course, Em? What have been the, the good things about the course that you studied? Uh, the thing what I liked the most, because when I was in high school, I struggled with doing exams. So the what I liked about it was it's all coursework. So in a way, you've actually got control of your own work and your own mm. grades because um, – and it gets marked online so you can see all the – the things that they're going through and all the comments on the side so in a way whatever grade you want so as in pass merit distinction you can actually get that with just having the coursework instead of sitting in the exam yeah i think um i when i went when i was your age and i went to to college i did a levels which is a completely different way of doing it and i've taught a levels here at college cambria and um Often when we have open days, people ask, well, is it, is it the same as A-levels? Is it as good as A-levels? Should they do A-levels or um, or a, a B-tech, um, a vocational qualification? And I, it's not that one's better than another. It's it's that they're different. And I think different qualifications, different courses. So either the vocational route that Emily's followed or A-levels, you know, you as a student will suit one of those paths or one of those paths will suit you. Um as far as exams go, our level one course doesn't have any exams uh, currently on that course. Our level co two course does. Our level two course does have two exams. Um, however, um, you know our, our students still regularly pass our level two course with those. And our current level three course that we that Emily sat and the course that we'll be delivering next year, again, um, doesn't have any exams on. And, and I think the, the coursework element is, is, is a different way for some people to learn and be assessed. And... I think it really, really does suit some students. Uh, and I think, as, as Emily said, then you're always aware of what what criteria, what qualification, what grades you need to go for to try and get the best qualifications. And, and we always try and teach you guys to, to, to the highest level. We always try and teach you to distinction. And, and then if you aim for distinction and you fall short, then you're still going to get a merit and, and vice versa. So that's pretty good. What about any of the units, Em, that you've enjoyed studying? Um, the one that I found the most interesting was sports injuries. Okay. Just because obviously you could see like what injuries you can get, how to prevent them, um, and obviously being a sports player myself, it actually helped me to not get injured because I've been injured a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, but it was just such a shame that that one got cut short because. Karen said that we were going to do like massages and how to do stuff like that. But yeah, listen, it's it's been a really strange time, obviously for me, for you, but for anyone watching, really, um, you know, for a lot of people across the world, this this um, pandemic that we're, that we're in the midst of at the moment, and um, it, it's a shame that some some of your some of the deliveries had to stop because you were looking mm. looking forward to the sports injuries one, but. Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a good unit. I've taught sports injuries before, and it is interesting. It's funny that it's your favourite, um, and it probably says a little bit about you because I know a lot of students who get a bit squeamish, and when we do the sports injuries unit, yeah, um, I get people turning away or people you know pulling pull faces, but um, definitely, and I think it lends itself to to careers in the health industry, medicine, um, physiotherapy, and things like that. Um, what about how many of the extra things that we've done? Have, have you been part of any of the um, events that we've held for for other students or for the local community and things like that? Uh, yeah, we did um, our level two leaders. So that involved coaching um, disabled people who came into our college. So that was a massive like experience to be able to do sessions suitable to their needs. So that was good. And the fact that we don't, always have to do lessons inside so we did have a trip at a water organized to go and glen clean but again that got cancelled but sorry yeah I think, <laughs> emily's um it's i think i think some of the questions that, that we've had in the past already have been um in regards to the, the split between practical and theory um and uh, i think you know we've, we've tried as a department to in increase the amount of outside of the classroom activities we've done 
Um, Emily's been a bit unfortunate this year because we uh, we arranged a Glen Glen Clint trip, uh, outdoor adventurous activities trip for two of our groups, and um, one of the groups got to go just before the, uh, the lockdown, and Emily's group were, were due to go the week that we uh, that things started shutting down. So that was a bit of a nightmare, unfortunately, um, for them. But fantastic experiences that, that we try and offer in, in that way. Um, you know, working with other students within the college, whether that be uh, students working on other courses lower levels um working with with the out, outside community so we've, we've done some sessions for local primary schools i'm guessing you've probably helped out with some of the athletics events we've done for local primary schools um and, and got some qualifications and some experience along the way um emily uh, received our, our sports award last year for sports students of the year um and we also nominated her for btech students of the year um, which she was shortlisted for because she's done a good job. And now Emily's going to be moving into um, HE with us, us on one of our foundation degrees. Do you want to say a little bit about that, Em? What, why you've made that decision and, and what your thoughts on that are? Yeah, um, one of the like the main reason why I wanted to stay is because the teachers, or tutors, should I say, that have taught me in level three and extended year, well, I'll be having the same one. So technically, in a way, they know what's best for me, how I learn, what my strengths and weaknesses are, so and then to support me with my education. And then, obviously, staying at home is me like a massive to me because I'm a mummy's girl. <laughs> but obviously, um, I play netball locally as well, so that will allow me to still go to uh, uni still get all my good grades but and then still be at home um playing my netball as well yeah and um i know tim's done a, a live chat about the foundation degrees earlier on today and um you know I, I i moved away for university i know tim stayed at home and commuted to, to university uh, and you're going to do a foundation degree and it again it's very similar to that argument between doing a levels or a b-tech with university for people who do want to continue in education that there's, there's no right or wrong it's not that moving away is fantastic or or commuting is, is brilliant it depends on your circumstances based on your family commitment um and and your netball and, and having jobs as well having part-time jobs in the area that, that this is a really good opportunity for you and i know that you're comfortable in the college but for many people um, and i know most of your classmates are, are going to university you know across both groups um some pretty far some not so far but you know i think it depends what suits each, each person and, and what's best for them um fantastic yeah just just moving on from that really i suppose um the uh the, the prospect i think is something we sometimes get asked about but by by students and again quite often by parents you know what what can what can my child do after the course at college cambria and Emily's moving into HE. I think a lot, I think the majority of Emily's peers this year are going to go to, uh, to HE at various universities. Uh, other other op op opportunities would be to go into the leisure industry. I know Emily already works in the leisure industry. And again, a couple of your classmates do very similar. So you could move into the leisure industry uh, from your college course. And some people will, will, will get some experience during the course. Um, some people will go into the health industry. Uh, again, physiotherapy. I know Emily long term is looking at potentially working in in fitness and health to support people with um, lifelong activity. I suppose teaching. Obviously, I I've gone into teaching. Uh, most of my peers will have done similar courses to what you guys can do with us at College Cambria. Um, so teaching is definitely an option. Primary, secondary, FE or HE. Coaching. A lot of our students are very keen on coaching. I, I coach alongside teaching. I know that we've got a couple of coaches within the staff team. Danielle Coxey at, at Yale is a uh, netball coach. He's one of Emily's netball coaches for regionals. Um, Aled Ellis uh, with his rugby. Um, so not a number of us really um, involved in coaching. And that is a great opportunity that people will follow from this. And uh, physiotherapy seems to be quite a popular one with our students at the moment. But again, you'd... You'd need to go to university before you do that. Um, we we'll move on to some questions um, shortly. I've, I've got some written down that we've already had um, through to us. But again, just just want to invite you to send any questions in if you're watching. Um, if you're not sure of anything, 
I always say no, no question is a, is a stupid question. If, if you're thinking it, someone else is probably thinking it. And if you don't know the answer, then, then there's, no, there's no shame in not knowing it. So if you've got any questions, ask for me, for Emily in general. If I can't answer, um, I, I will direct it to the people who can or, or, again, happy to get back to you in the future with any answers. So, again, fire them in and ask any questions you've got. I have to drink because I talk far too much and too quickly. Um, yeah, so some of the basic questions that we've had through. Um, some people will sometimes discuss EMA and, and, you know, is EMA an option and what it is. And for those of you who don't know, EMA is Education Maintenance Allowance. And some students are entitled to some money each week to stay in education. The idea is that some people might struggle to, to attend college, to pay for lunches and transport or materials. So if, if uh, it's means tested, so if, if household income um, is below a certain threshold, you, you can apply for money. And some, some of our students get £30 a week. However, they must attend to get that, to get that money. And if, if they don't attend, they don't. So for those of you who may be struggling or have some concerns about coming to college, that there is support available. Um, and another means of support is, is buses. So often people ask, well, how do I get to college? Is there a way around it? And I can't give you too much direct information because student services at the college would do that, but there are buses available. Some people will get an Arriva bus pass that they can use on their bus and others will be able to get a college transport. Emma, you walk in, don't you, Emma? You're close enough to walk. Yeah, I haven't been around the corner, so I just walk. So a lot, a lot, a lot of people um, in the area walk, but obviously we have students come from, from across the county and beyond um, and, and there are ways and means to get to, to colleges. If, if there was a course, for example, that wasn't on offer at Deeside but was at Yale, we have transport that goes from, from site to site as well. So don't rule courses out based on, on things like that. Um, student, student services at the college are fantastic. We've got a really good student services department. So if you have issues with um, applying for college or once you're at college, we have a great student service department. So, you know, we will focus on your course as, as tutors, and we will we will try and help you develop as as people. Uh, you know, I think I think that's key to to us. But for other issues that go on, we've got a fantastic student service department. Um, GCSEs as well. There is um, there's often questions well, hang on what what happens about my English and maths. We will support people to get their GCSEs if they don't. Um, achieve them at GCSE level, so you'll continue to work. And you, you, you did your English with us, is that right? Yeah. What? Um, yes. You, how did that go? What's What's the outcome for that? So uh, we had I had a set timetable. So mostly, what, so I was in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it meant on Thursday mornings for an hour and a half, I would come in and do my English lessons. And then go home then so but that was i found that good because my english then didn't interrupt my actual sport lessons so i was able to do the two then and you've now completed your, your english yeah <clears throat> and, and achieved achievable grade as well yeah 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 fantastic she's a bit she, she doesn't want to pick herself up but she's done really well for english to be fair we've had a question come through um and it says what differences are there between the yale site and the d side site is it the same tutors and similar facilities fantastic question thank you for that question um in in the past there has been a lot of um crossover with tutors i say it's only last year i i worked across both sites probably um two days in yale i think um and three days in deep side or there thereabouts um but more and more so we have got the same we've got deep side tutors who will remain at deep side and, and yale tutors that remain in, in in wrexham and with the current situation that that is more and more important at the moment as well that we have less crossover um Facilities, well, I mean, all, but what I would say is we've got we've got fantastic tutors on both sides. We are um, we, we might be two separate sites at the moment, but but we are kind of one big team. And I, I know the guys over there really well. I haven't worked with them before, and I think you'll get a good experience um, either way. There's probably a good mix, I think, as well in ages of staff. M, there's quite a good mix, I think, in the ages that we've got. Do you think? Yeah, because um, we had. I know in my first year in level three, 
we I was the youngest and then our eldest was I think he was 24 and so then ages then mixed between them but it didn't make any difference at all having that ages different really yeah um and the facilities the facilities is a really good question <clears throat> as emily said that the facilities we've got in d-side at the moment um are really really good we um we have a, a um a, a gym on site lifestyle fitness are based on our sites and we're able to use lifestyle fitness so some of our units like uh fitness and, and health instructing um and fitness testing um, we also have got a sports hall and an athletic centre, um, and we've got a staging with an outdoor athletics track. So we've got good facilities, and we also make use of facilities in the local community, local leisure centres, the 3G, which is available at Connors Key High School, and um, uh, along with, with, with um, Connors Key Nomads. We've got really good relationships in the community, which which benefits us, but, but most, of the, uh, most of the facilities we, we require on site. Yeah, yeah, Yale's um, slightly different because over the last two years, Yale have been having a whole new sports centre built. So hopefully when any new students go to Yale in September, they're going to have fantastic facilities. The, the plans are brilliant. Unfortunately, um, having been out of college now since probably the early March, the middle of March, not been able to see how the development's coming, but the plans are in place with a fantastic sports building in Yale with a, with a you know state-of-the-art uh, sports hall, um, fitness suites, studio, things like that. So it's, it's going to be fantastic facilities. I think whichever site you go to, you're going to be really, really looking from from the facilities point of view. Um, I think the other thing I'd say is that that whilst it's probably been difficult at Yale the last two years, we've made really good links with um, with uh, leisure facilities in the area. So um, Glendore University, the tennis centre in Wrexham, um, Brumbo Sports and Leisure Facilities. Golf, um, golf clubs in the area. Apologies for not knowing a bit more about some of the golf um, golf course in the area, but uh, we've made great links, and, and I don't think those links will be will be ignored in the future. We'll certainly be um, be utilising them. So either way, I think you're going to get really good facilities. Question come through from Joe Edwards: Are there any sports teams I can join? So we've um, we've got a sports player on the chat at the moment and um, just just explain a bit about your experiences from sport whilst you've been at College Cambria. Okay so I signed up to play for the college netball team which meant me going to trials which was across two days with Daniel Coxey being the coach and uh, so what happened there we got shortlisted in, into the team so that means that we play in a league which is against other colleges as well, which will be in all types of sports with your football, your rugby as well, not just netball. And then what you do then is you can actually go and play in tournaments. So I know for us netball girls, we ended up being Welsh champions in our in our league, what tournament that we played in. But also not you don't just play for your college team, you get a chance to trial for other teams as well. So I got the chance to trial for um, British colleges and Welsh colleges as well, which I was both su uh, successful for in them as well. So you don't actually just play for the college. You can actually expand your experience in your sport as well. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a, Emily was a great student for me to ask to come on this chat today from her experiences because she's received international honours through doing that. But last year, team-wise, we... Um, we had um, a number of male football teams. We work in partnership with Connors Key Nomads. So we had two scholarship teams with Connors Key Nomads. We also had a football team in, in Yale, which we work in partnership with um, Kevin Druid. So I think about half of the team was made up of Kevin Druid's players last year, and the rest were um, college students. We've had a, another team at D-Side as well in recent years. Um, so we've had you know three or four male football teams. We've had one netball team, which is... Um, you know, it's been really successful. We have had women's football team, um, which um, which I've been involved in, in in the past, and what else? Rugby as well. Alad, um, Alad and Dan Huff, who's, who's just left the college, have, have done a really good job in developing um, rugby side of things as well at the college. So, got got a lot of teams we can do, and also we have a, a really good department um, 
uh, Active Cambria, which Don, Don Welsh is involved in, which tries to put as many activities on for students during the day as well. So some students will go down at lunchtime. I know a lot of your classmates used to go down at lunchtime and play football or basketball or badminton. Um, so there are teams you can be involved in. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like in September based on the uh, current situation with um, with COVID-19, but we are we are planning on having teams next year and, and being being back going again as soon as we're allowed to and as soon as it's safe for us to do so. Um, and also there's kind of recreational activities that people can get involved with for, for, for leisure or for fun or for fitness. Uh, good question coming through from Joe Burke. How many hours a week do you spend in the college on a level three course? So um, it's, you will do you'll do 18 hours of, of your course. You may have bolt-ons for English and maths if you have maybe progressed from level two and not received that yet. What was your timetable like last last year, Em? Um, I quite enjoyed mine because mine was Monday, Tuesday, had Wednesday off and then Thursday. So it kind of separated it up. But some of the courses that, well, um, units that we do, sorry, involves getting assessed playing a sport. So in a way, it's about, I would say it was about 50-50 because some of them was like we had practical individual and then we had had team as well so that's like two lessons which could be on the same day or on the two different days which were like two hours a lesson so technically you do get quite a lot of practical time to play so you did three three full days in college last year um and you yeah. felt like the split was about 50 50 between prac and theory yeah yeah i mean I, it's, it's good that yeah. if you'd have asked me about the split between prac and theory, I would have said we'd do more theory than prac. I think we would probably do, and we probably have to. But I do think in, in recent years we've tried to get in as many units that make it practical um, and as many opportunities to, to get practical and get some experience. So we've obviously done the athletics events with the local primary schools that we've discussed and um, various other activities as well. You've obviously got some more qualifications. You did your level two sports leaders. Um, did you do badminton and te tennis? Qualifications, perhaps yeah, as well. Yeah, did um, badminton, tennis, tag rugby, and athletics. And um, probably first aid. Did you you do first aid? Yeah. 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 So th three days a week in college, lots of um, practical experience within the community and with various groups, and some extra qualifications. Which um, I think I think it's a competitive market sport and a lot of people will, will want to progress in sport and when students say, Sean, how, how do I get a job? What do I do? What you do in college is fantastic, but you need to consider what you do as well outside of college and, and working for the local um, leisure centre or adding qualifications to, to what you what you've studied in college will, will give you great a great chance. Um, Ah, Ellie Hughes, are the other exams on the course? Thanks, Ellie. Um, on the course, again, uh, I've touched upon it a little bit, but on our level three course that Emily has studied, Emily hasn't done any exams, um, and on our level, level three course next year, there will, there will be no exams. Um, if, you, if, if you start off at level two, there are two exams. Um, again, I don't think it's anything great, you know, to, to greatly worry you. Our, our students have coped with this for, for a number of years. Um, and it's not a problem. And at level one, there are no exams either. So level three, level one, no exams. Level two, there are two units that you do exams for. But again, it's um, it, it's not too much of an issue and, and it, it's not something I'd worry about. But thanks for that question. Good question, that. Um, Cara Jones, can I join the course if I haven't studied PO? Yeah, Cara, good, good question. Really important to, to understand. Yeah. I was the same as you. We didn't we didn't get the opportunity to do GCSEP in my school. I, I don't remember if it was because of the tutors we had available or or, or the curriculum at the time. Um, and yeah, as long as you meet the requirements. So, for example, if it was level three, if you've got five GCSEs, C or above, they don't have to be PE. In fact, you could get PE and you could get an E, but you could get um, five other really good GCSEs, including your English and Maths, and you would still go on that course. All I would say is, is if you come onto a sports course, you're going to be doing, you know, as Emily will testify, you're going to be doing three days of a week of, of heavy sports loaded units. So don't don't do it for an easy option or, or for a bit of fun. You need to have some kind of interest in sport. 
everyone doesn't need to be brilliant. You, you, you know, it might just be that you're interested in sports and you want to go into sports journalism. It could be that you're a fantastic golfer and you, and you want you want to go pro. Um, so whether you've done PE at GCSE or not shouldn't be a deciding factor, but it should be how keen you are in sport, how interested are are you going to be able to, um, you know, relate to some of the topics that we cover over over three days. Um, would you agree, Em? Yeah. Did you do GCSE PE in school? Yeah, I did. But I was, because when I came to my interview, I got an A in my PE, but I didn't pass my English. So that's how they kind of let me on the course because they were saying, hang on, but I've, I've got my A in PE, but I haven't got my English. So that's why they let me come on to then do my English whilst doing, obviously, the course. Yeah, and I think that was it. I think... Um... You know, we, we we could see that what you did outside of college, with your part time job, with your netball, and obviously with the A that you got at GCSE, that I think that you were an ideal student for what we were going to do. And I think giving you the chance has actually proved the right decision because you've now got your C in English and um, within a year and done really really well. And um, so another question: What are the assessments at level three? So every every assessment you've done, Em, has been coursework based. Yeah. Yeah. No exams, all coursework. But I think it's important to probably recognise that we're not talking about um, every every assessment being an essay. Do you want to maybe explain some of the different types of assessment that we've that we've done with you over the last two years? Uh, yeah, so we've done assessments such as obviously on your own, so individually. We've done group work. We've done powerpoints. We've done practical ones as well. So they're not just constantly writing loads at a time. So in college, you have past merit and distinction. So if you write if like the littlest bit, the basics, then you will get your pass. So technically, them going up in order, distinction being the highest, the, mo the more you write in depth is how much you're going to get in a grade, if that makes sense. So it, yeah. it's highly what it's up to you what how much you write to how much grades you want at the end. Yeah, I mean it's, it's not just about amounts though. It's it's about understanding, isn't it? I think as we move through, the more you show that you understand it, and you are someone who writes a lot, so you you get your you get your understanding clear in volume. But again, it's it's making sure that you show that you can understand what what the theory says and, and applying it, but. You know, as you say, essays, there could be some essays, group presentations, individual presentations, uh, role plays sometimes in regards to, we were going to do some role plays if we'd have finished this year in regards to giving feedback. Um, and what else was I going to say? Um, also practical assessments. So obviously for your sports coaching, for example, you, you developed a session plan, delivered the session, and, and then it was assessed um practically so lots of different assessments but currently on level three no exams um i think they're all the questions that we get that we've had through so we'll just kind of wrap up i want to thank emily obviously for coming in and doing this um with me today really appreciate it it's done a good job thanks em um and then just direct you guys a bit for your next steps so if if you haven't had all the information you need through my waffle um, this afternoon and you'd like to know a little bit more, then you can contact Student Services. You can email them at studentservices at cambria.ac.uk. You can also apply for any courses at the moment, so you can contact Student Services support with that, or um, you can visit the website www.cambria.ac.uk. Um, hopefully, um, that has been, that's been useful. Um, again, if you watch live, I appreciate your time. If, if you come and watch it at a later date, fantastic. Get in touch, ask any more questions. Um, thank you very much, Dioc. Goodbye.